Christ, brothers and sisters, for us is more than just a theory. He's more than just someone who we remember as a historical person. He's more than someone that we just pray to. He's more than just someone who established the religion which we follow, Holy Orthodoxy. For us, Christ is not just a way of life, as some may say. Christ is life. And therefore, to be separated from Him means death. Not just physical death, but spiritual death. Those who knew this and understood this were the saints. And such a saint was Saint Marina, whom we celebrated tonight, tomorrow being her feast day, the 17th of July. A saint who now, for more than 1800 years, has been venerated by the faithful and is in the hearts of the faithful up until this day as one of the greatest saints in our church female and also a great martyr of the church we know that saint marina's parents were not christians but they were pagans we don't know much about her mother her mother may have died when she was still very young because we know that at a very young age her pagan father gave her to a maiden so that she can raise her without realizing that this maiden was a Christian. So when she raised Marina, she raised her with the values, the morals and the lifestyle of any other Christian. So when she came of age, at 16 years old, she confessed to her father that she was a Christian. And to the displeasure of her father, he took her and sent her himself so that she can be tried and judged accordingly. When she was brought before the judge, they asked who she was and where she was from. We know that Saint Marina was from Antioch, an ancient place which is today can be found between modern day Turkey and Syria. And Marina didn't respond that this is where she was from. She replied saying, I am Marina, the servant of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and I belong to him. Astonished by the courageous reply of the young Marina, this man tried with flatteries to change her mind. And when none of these flatteries succeeded, he began to threaten her with different tortures. She, being unwavered by any of this, stood courageously and said that nothing could ever and possibly change her mind. So he sent her, then he, gave her, he handed her over to his soldiers and they began to strike her on the back with iron nails so that her flesh could be torn. And then, once her flesh had been torn from her back and she was bleeding exceedingly, she was thrown into prison so that she could change her mind. In the prison, Christ came to her and healed her of her wounds. And then, the next day when she was taken back to the judge so that again she can be questioned, he saw that she had been healed and restored and him attributing it not to the one true God but to the false gods which the pagans worship, said to her, Marina, do you see how the gods have been gracious to you? They are giving you another opportunity to renounce your Christian faith and confess the gods as the true gods. 
She said to him, you are foolish. It is not your false gods made out of stone and statues that healed me, but it is Jesus Christ, the one true God. Hearing this again, he had her beaten mercilessly and again thrown into prison. In prison, we know that because she, reigned, she remained courageous and not withstanding against anything, the devil himself appeared to her. He appeared to her trying to scare her, but nothing scared her. She simply made the sign of the cross over the devil and he vanished. Eventually, seeing the courage of this young woman and that nothing would change her mind, and all the tortures that they inflicted on her, they beheaded her and she received the crown of martyrdom. This was just a small summary of the life of Saint Marina. But even just from this small summary, we can take that at her age, she was a woman not only of courage, but a woman who had a sound mind a woman who had absolute, not only faith, but love and dedication to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Today, we cannot say that Saint Marina is dead, not only because she's a saint, but because she shows her signs and her wonders as one being miraculous. She is known as the wonder worker, because of the many miracles that she continues even to this day to, that she performs. There is a monastery dedicated to her on the island of Andros. And on this island, many people flock so that they can venerate her precious relics and receive healing. There are no few people who have been healed by the prayers of Saint Marina. She lo she's loved so much and so popular among the people that when mothers would put their children to sleep, they would sing lullabies dedicated to Saint Marina in different parts of Greece. I know in Cyprus, there is such a lullaby which calls on Saint Marina to come and gently take the child and take him and show him paradise him or her paradise so that this child can be can be comforted and then bring it back safely into the arms of its mother and make sleep be gentle such is the culture and the tradition of us Greeks at least and this is why it's almost impossible to be a Greek and not to be orthodox even though it can happen because our culture and our faith is so deeply tied and rooted together. Saint Marina is seen as the protectress of infants. She's seen as the healer of many sicknesses, but also she is called upon when people are going through temptations. Hence, why in her icon? We usually, or many times, we depict Saint Marina holding a cross in one hand and in the other hand holding the horns of a demon, just like she did in her life where she, where she banished, the, expelled the demon with the sign of the cross. I remember when I was a little boy, I was given this book. It's a little paper book in Greek of the life of Saint Marina. And it took me years, because it was given to me as a little boy, it took me years to actually read the book, but I always had it close to me, because at the front it had the icon of Saint Marina holding the devil by his horns. And so, every time I felt tempted, every time I even felt that I needed the intercessions of the saint, I would look at this small book with a paper icon of Saint Marina and instantly be comforted and strengthened 
by her so that I can endure my own temptations. She's a saint, brothers and sisters, that we need so much in today's day and age. Not only amongst the youth, not only amongst the young, but anyone who can call upon her name. Because we know that we are living during times of temptation. We know we are living during times where our faith and what we believe is being tested. We know we are living in a time where even Christ and his church is being persecuted. And to have the example of saints such as Saint Marina, who stood so brave, bravely and courageously in front of the enemy, in front of danger, and nothing was able to bring her down, but she stood as a strong pillar, unbroken and unfallen. This is the example that we ask for. But how do we do this? We do this by cultivating our love for the truth. We do this by cultivating and being united to life and not to death. Saint Marina was the bride of Christ and Christ is the bridegroom. We are asked to be united to this bridegroom through his holy church. We are asked to cultivate this with our own personal prayer life, with our own communal worship when we worship together, through our studying and meditating on the Holy Scriptures, the New Testament, through reading the lives of the saints and getting to know the saints and asking for their prayers and intercessions, for asking Christ to purify our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies. For praying continuously to our guardian angel who is by our side ceaselessly since we have been given a guardian angel at our baptism by falling on our knees before our precious lady, the mother of God and asking her to be a protectress, a shelter, and a bridge to lead us to heaven. All of these things, brothers and sisters, become the foundation of our spiritual growth and they become the foundation of our life in Christ. Because life without Christ is not life, as Saint Porfirios tells us. May Saint Marina be for us a shining example of courage so that we can come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved through the grace of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.